Uh, well, first of all, I'd just like to thank everybody who was involved in putting this on. Um, and I'm really happy to be here. Um, thanks, Anthony. Thanks, Linda. And thanks, everybody else. I, I probably don't know the names yet, but uh, I will meet. And also, it's really promising to be really exciting. Uh, three couple of days, th three days. Um, already we've seen some really interesting things. And lots to think about. Um, my um, sort of role in this, or my position is, uh, I always feel I'm a little bit of an outsider, and it's the kind of position I like. Um, I do work with uh, video, uh, moving image, and architecture and architectural space, but I don't work uh, until now with 3D technologies. So, um, so it's sort of, I think my practice sort of is on the peripheries a little bit of what's being done, but I, it seems that the peripheries are quite uh, expansive in this in this in this project. So I called the um, uh, the the the, the, the um, uh, my talk "Forgetting Cinema: uh, Erasing Modern Architecture Through Animated Drawing and 3D Models." Um, and the idea of forgetting cinema is uh, it, it sort of works three ways. Um, uh, Leela mentioned the project I did of talking about forgotten or lost cinemas in Montreal. So there's that notion of just the cinema itself as a piece of architecture that has been forgotten. Um, there's also an idea, of a more performative idea, that moving on to new sort of ways of uh, representing and presenting the cinematic model starts to become uh, something of the past that we perhaps should forget about and move on to other ways of working. And then perhaps the third one is to actually reuse that cinematic model or that cinematic process as a process to look into the activity of forgetting. So I think if I show you what I'm working on, I might make that a little more clear. Uh, so, so my recent work makes use of move, moving a still apparatus to restage architecture within architecture. It is structured through the uncompromising physique physicality of the modern urban landscape, investigating built sites inscribed with forgotten promise and face monumentality. So for the past, um, for quite a while now, I've been working with urban space and urban architecture, and particularly modern, more recently, particularly modern architecture of a certain era, and looking a little bit how that, uh, that space affects our kind of experience, um, and also how, uh, also the, the sort of the resonance of those of that sort of architecture. And then what I do, or what I have been doing, is I've been taking these sort of structures and usually filming them or photographing them and then restructuring them with the, within the space of the gallery or the studio or whatever, so that the architecture is sort of um, is, is restaged within, within architecture. So an example, one of the first works I did um, in that manner is a piece I called Outside, where I actually filmed a uh, public space Square in uh, Berlin, and I wanted in this work I was trying to work with this notion of um, uh, complexity and chaos, and I want I was very interested in the movements of a crowd, and I wanted to try on one surface show all the movements of a crowd. So what I did with this piece was I sort of interwove uh, th three projections onto twelve screens. So I don't know if you can see, but the the blue shirt would re reappear at another screen over. This was in this was a image in movement. So it was this sort of idea of, of, of reconstructing movement within architecture. Um, and it was shown as a loop, uh, quite a short loop, but a sort of seamless loop. So it was just a sort of continual movement in, in shown in real time uh, without sound. And then just in terms of the restaging the architecture, the actual space, I, I had a rented uh, space, uh, which was also used as a studio, but I opened it to the public. Uh, behind this uh, a array of screens is a, is a, is a, are windows, which I blocked up. So I, I reconstructed the, the array of windows into the space. So you sort of the windows get replaced, get replaced by a screen. So, um, and then a, this is a, just a photo installation where I uh, went to the same platform uh, repeatedly uh, in, in Berlin. Uh, of the train station in uh, of the Alexa Alexanderplatz station, and took a series of photos, two, three, four, five, and then presented them together. So that sort of, it's a, almost a sort of diaristic piece where you kind of just you're always going back to the same place, seeing the same landscape. Um, but again, the, the the way it was presented was to reconstruct a little bit the grid, mon the modern grid, 
within the gallery is another modern grid, so sort of a grid within a grid. Uh, another one uh, where I, there's a, there's a turning video uh, sort of looking up into a skylight and then it's, it's replaced within the space of the gallery. So the sort of the architecture of the gallery, you're, you're aware, this is quite large scale and you're aware of the movement of the, in the video, but you're also aware of the, of the, uh, the, the architectural space around. Uh, it, it, was, it was important with me in this work to have, to not put them in complete darkness so that you could actually see the, the space of the, of the gallery as well. It might seem a, 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 a minor detail, but for me it was quite important. So you don't have this illusion of being in this, uh, in this cinematic kind of atopia, as uh, Robert Smith would call it, uh, of, dis of, of sort of disappearing, but you're, you're sort of, you're aware of the space. And you're also, um, as Anthony was talking about, this notion of walking around, I always wanted to encourage that you could walk around within the space as well. Um, and then one of the last ones I did was uh, one which was called Transcanadien, which I actually showed in Finland. I did my doctorate in Finland, so this is why the certain works were done there. And these are still, they're, they're, mo they're moving stills of a series of uh, uh, warehouses that line the highway, which is known as the Trans-Canadian Highway, coming into Montreal, and I was fascinated by these. This architecture, because it was sort of an architecture, sort of modern architecture of a certain promise, but it had become rather mm -hmm. worn out um, and sort of changing its role. And I was, you know, offered a chance to exhibit in this space. This is, a, this is an old, an old uh, warehouse space by the port in, fin in in Helsinki. So for me, there was a kind of this, this, this warehouse within a warehouse, this sort of space, and, and this, this warehouse space also no longer functioned as a war warehouse. So this sort of, these sort of these, the way these spaces kind of linger but, but, but change their roles. And so deliberately again, so these are all backlit projections onto uh, perspex uh, sheets. And so the, the, you had also the daylight coming in through the windows, which would, would you could sort of have both lights at the same time. Um, and then, uh, so my first uh, kind of um, participation in the uh, uh, Elastic Spaces project was the walk. Um, uh, Leela talked to me about the project and I said, well, I had this thing about, I'm sort of, or I just had this certain interest that the um, cinemas in Montreal were all closing and I was, I just thought it was significant and sort of, so I thought, well, maybe that could fit into the, to the, um, the project just to talk about this space that we knew, these spaces that we knew they're disappearing. So I called it, so after forgetting cinema, and it's now remembering, or before forgetting cinema, it's remembering darkness, uh, tracing the past architecture as a cinematic experience in downtown Montreal. Um, and this is just, uh, basically, uh, what, what I read in an article was that there were 20, in, since 1925, 23 cinemas in the downtown core of Montreal, there's a lot more in the larger city, uh, and five cinema, 23 cinemas and cinema complexes have closed in Montreal since 1985, leaving just, just five in operation. So, um, the, 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 so to give an idea of um, you know, what, what that looks like, also just, to, uh, I finished it by saying, there's also, there has actually been a, because some people have sort of said, well, no, but yeah, they're less, it's just a, it's just a reconfiguration, they're just bigger cinemas now. But in fact, the cinema going population has is declining and has declined. So that actual experience of going to cinema, maybe it'll maybe it'll level out because there's still an interest in it, but it's not what it was. Um, so if you see, uh, so I made I drew this map of Montreal. And also, this project I think it's important to say that it, it comes a lot from a personal experience. So these are sort of cinemas I remembered going to, and I remember the experience of go going to them and leaving them and walking out into the street and what the street looked like as you came out of the cinema and the way and, and the way you could find your way through the city by the cinemas that were in it. Um, so if I, so this is, this is, and I guess this would be 1985 <coughs> around, and this is now. So, <laughs> um, it, you know, so it's a very different uh, experience. Um, at the same time, which is very interesting, is this part of Montreal, there's a lot of projections, outdoor projections on buildings and things, so it's being replaced by another type of spectacle. So, yeah, there we go. Um, and it's just a, these are just a couple of pictures that they were they were quite iconic. Some of them, I don't know if you remember this one, but <laughs> uh, and then of course the, and of course the rooms, you know, the, the, the production rooms. So so gone with the disappearing moving houses, our interior architectures of collective viewing architectures, and so it's there are not only the amphitheaters and screening rooms, but also the vestibules, ticket offices, and corridors connecting them. So there's a sort of uh, spatial memory we have of the city that, that kind of 
uh, of a city that is no longer there. Um, these architectures link the viewer experience to the neighborhoods and urban spaces the cinemas occupy. And there was a, also a certain link to, to neighborhoods as well. So the, for, for me especially, the city can no longer be mapped out through the locations of its cinemas. And so this co co constellation of experiences is, is fading and you know, we're starting to have new experiences in the city. And just an idea, this was York, the York Cinema, which is now where part of Concordia is. Um, this is when they were showing Woodstock, I guess, in 1969. This is what I remember it looking like, <laughs> and now it's completely gone. So, so um, I'm I'm a little bit t today. I'm a little bit saying, well, what what? How can I continue working with this uh, this project? Uh, I, I really like this project. I'm trying to think how, how my work fits. So I so what, I'm sort of coming proposing two projects, but I don't. Um, it's not a. It's not, a, it's not a pitch, <laughs> it's just sort of, way, it's a, sort of a, a, a thinking out loud, let's say. So I will present two aspects of my practice related to a possible participation in the events in Bath in 2018. So there's two possibilities, two things I'm working on. Video installations made using rot rotoscoping technique that animates views of the modern city and handmade miniature models of abandoned cinemas. And so both of these approaches respond to three-dimensional experience of the moving image and its inherent relationship with modern urban space. So the, where do the handmade miniature models of abandoned cinemas come from? Well, this was a project I did. Uh, okay, you can't read the bottom. I'll tell you what it's called, Unti Untitled Architecture. There are four, three uh, color inkjet prints mounted on MDF. They're about 42 by 70 centimeters each. So they're sort of this big. Um, and they're actually photographs of models. And they're two scale photographs of models I made. Um, and these were made. Uh, during a sabbatical in Berlin, I was sort of interested, I was very interested in the, just the sort of architecture, but the kind of, it, it, an architecture that, 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 that was maybe made without architects a little bit, architecture that was not signature buildings, but, but just sort of surrounded you there. And I, I, sort of, I sort of found archetypes, types of buildings. And so then I, I so that for, I call them sort of unconscious architecture, the sort of architecture that's there that reminds you of the city, but you don't know who made it. And you don't really know anybody who lives there. And I made variations of them. So this is a sort of West Berlin, probably from the 1960s um, apartment block, um, which, and all of them had, I think, one, two, a certain number of floors, I added one. So I just took it a little bit off scale, so it was a little bit wrong. Um, so, um, and I, I, I built them, and then I built these boxes that were sort of like um, cardboard packing boxes, partly to protect them, but partly to sort of distance of this kind of memory. Uh, this is a just a, a window, and this is a really strange storefront that is kind of a uh, um, sort of Frankenstein because it's it's it was a sort of modernist storefront which to which elements were added later, and so I, I, this does really exist. It was in the east part of the city. Um, I think maybe the um, the turning doors were added later, so it sort of had this. It sort of was a, a bit. Um, a bit off in, already in this design. So I constructed these out of cardboard. So, so this was something I did in 2011. Uh, so more recently, I was invited to um, participate in a project in Helsinki. And I don't know if anybody here knows Helsinki, but there's a, there's a place where a tram stop that's called Fis Kulma. And Fis Kulma means five corners. And it's one of these intersections where five streets mix, meet. Um, and a friend of mine, who's Marietta Oya, who's an artist there, wanted to make projects based on this space. And what I kind of, I, what I learned also was that this was also, uh, uh, historically, it was a, a point in the city where two um, neighborhoods were divided. One was much more wealthy and uh, sort of bourgeois, and the other was more working class. Of course, that's all changing now. So, it, so it had a sort of, it had a sort of uh, symbolic resonance within the history of the city as well. So my first um, uh, uh, kind of um, response to this project, and I, you just see it sort of um, working, working on it, is if you look at the grid in the front, I was really interested in this notion of, and this is, goes back to mapping the city, this notion of five corners, and how could you actually make a city that was based on five corners as opposed to four? So if you look, um, my five, instead of having a five corner, I made a, Made a hexagon, but always open. So there's always five. You can always leave in five different ways. And then where it's open, there's another opening towards another uh, 
smaller hexagon with smaller streets coming off it. So it was a sort of, it was a sort of notion of this sort of ideal city that, that sort of could function, that, that didn't function on the grid that we normally work with. So that was what was one of my um, responses. But then as I was uh, sort of researching a little bit, well, <coughs> the first, the actually, yeah, so I went to this five corner, and the first thing, one thing I noticed is that sign that says Marana, and I sort of asked them, I said, well, it's a cinema. And I said, well, okay, well, what's, you know, what's show? They said, well, no, the cinema's gone, but they kept the sign. So I so said, this is interesting. Here's an abandoned cinema, you know. And then when I, I don't have an image, but when I went to the, talk to the gallery director, he said, yeah, well, you know, the hall next to us is a Rosicrucian hall, the Rosicrucian, you know, sort of religious group um, cult, as it were. And he said, but that used to be a cinema too. So I realized that this neighborhood was full of these abandoned cinemas. So I, 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 so I started working on um, looking at those. So I, I found some old, um, Magazines um, with with images of some non-existent cinemas in Helsinki, and then from these, I started building these models, which I showed. And they, these are quite small, um, and they're they're on wood. They're sort of relief models of of the cinematic space. So this is actually that one. Um, to, so to try and kind of reconstruct uh, that that space that's gone. Um, and, and, the, and the maquette was also, I like the maquette because in architecture it's something you build before you build the, the, the architecture. And I'm building them after. So it's sort of returning it to that point of sort of, con you're, you're thinking of it, you're conceiving of it, but it hasn't become yet. And I like this, this idea to put it after, that it sort of becomes this concept that, that occurs after, after the fact. So I built three of them like this. So trying, so these are sort of reliefs. So they are 3D in a way, but um, they sort of come out of the, they come out of the wood, so. And then a third one with a sort of curved screen. So that was one. Um, and then the, uh, I'm, I'm getting there. <laughs> the, uh, the, my, other, my other sort of, it's very much an ongoing project. It's a very slow project because it's, um, uh, we're, talking, we're talking about the notion of craft. Uh, it's, it's the rotoscoping technique where I'm drawing over, photo, uh, drawing over videos to uh, line, making line drawings or videos to make uh, moving images. Um, and I'm working with um, images of the modern city. So this is uh, in Albany, New York. It's the egg, and I don't remember the architect, but it's in the Rockefeller Plaza. Um, so this is, this is a still from a video. Uh, uh, I'll just show you, these are just the images that I'm working with. This is uh, Habitat 67 in Montreal. Um, uh, Moshe Safdie's housing complex, very well known. This is a, uh, I think it's a palace of sports and culture in Vilnius, Lithuania, which is no longer functional, which is a, it's a Soviet architecture. This is the Couvent de la Tourette in, uh, near Lyon, France, uh, uh, Le Corbusier and uh, Yanis Zanakis building. So in this one, for instance, the movement is actually walking past it. So it and then the, the last one I'll show you is the um, Stora Enso. It's an it's a, uh, Alvar Alto building <coughs> in, in Helsinki. So I filmed um, this one, the uh, uh, ferry moving away from it. So you have that sort of, you have sort of almost a tracking shot of it. Um, so this is, just a, you know, this is just a still of it, and I'll, and I'll show you a little clip. Um, but what I found was interesting, so what I did was I broke it down, just draw one image over another. And to begin with, I just drew the building, because I wanted to have this, sort of, this building that sort of gets smaller and disappears. Um, but it was not so interesting. <laughs> and then I realized there were also pitch, there was also people, so I started drawing the people, and it was very much like the uh, Anthony's little um, those ants, those um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, they they kind of add another space and another movement and another activity, or like the or like the little flies in, in Leela's piece. So so the people have an, have another movement, they have another, they give another scale to it, and also even in the spatial thing because they move in a different way than the building does. So let's see if the video, how do I do this? It's, it's a very short clip. It's part of a longer one. So there you get sort of movement with the people walking in front. And the, yeah. It'll be about four minutes long, so I'm going to get quite small. So thank you.